All right, I have some letters here that I need to answer over the next few videos. And I don't know when these videos will be coming out or whatever, but what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to um, show, I won't be showing any address or whatever. I might say a last name or something, but this one here has our ministry address on it. It's from London, um, has the return address, which I will not show, but it's London, England. Okay, and I'm going to be careful how I read this because I don't want to give away any names or whatever else. Uh, Dear Brian Denlinger, greetings from the UK. I have some really important questions I need answered. They're eating me alive. Just some context. I'm a newly saved Christian. I'm 20 years old, and I mean actually saved. Hallelujah. I'm going to start reading the KJV... Um, KJV something for the first time. Um, first Bible, as I have been brought up, Eastern Orthodox, but after watching your vids, I'm not so sure about Orthodoxy anymore. I just want to follow our Lord the righteous way. Can you clear it up for me if it's wrong slash heretical? If you could make a video about it, that would be awesome, but an email response is more than fine. Now, here's the video. Here are my points of contention after binge, binging your vids. Awesome work, by the way. Keep it up. I'm praying to saints for them to carry over the prayer to Jesus, including praying to Mary. Okay, is it right or wrong? Well, the Bible says there's one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. So you go right to uh, God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, that's the way it works there. Um, so no, you don't pray to saints. Again, the, I can answer your whole letter very simply. All right, what does the Bible say? final authority in the King James Bible. All right. Uh, the problem with Eastern Orthodoxy is they depart from the scriptures. They have all of their stuff, which you'll, you bring up here in some of the other questions. They have all this other stuff that they've added to the scriptures, just like the Roman Catholics have done. That's why they're not legitimate. All right. Um, next question. Icons, signs of the cross. Yeah. Um, the doing the cross thing and whatever else, where did they do it in the Bible? It's not there. Icons, well, it's to inspire faith. Uh, no, the just shall live by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. Okay. The evidence, faith is the evidence of things not seen. We're not supposed to have holy icons and pictures of the saints and whatever around the house. That's not there. No scripture for it. And again, it contradicts scripture. The Eucharist slash Holy Communion. All right. Uh, where's that at in the Bible? Uh, there's no Eucharist there. Uh, communion is fine to do, not a problem, but you have to understand the deeper implications there of reading and you know feeding on the Word of God. Uh, it's a spiritual thing there. Um, I've seen plenty of people take Holy Communion and they're, they go out just as wicked and evil as when they came in. All right, please understand that. But the Eucharistic teaching that the through transubstantiation, the... Um, I'm not sure what Eastern Orthodoxy teaches, how far they go with the whole transubstantiation thing. But, you know, to say that the presence of the Lord's body is physically there in the little cookie thing, and then his blood's there in the wine, and, and no, no, you're not getting it. You're not understanding things. You're a child in understanding if you believe that stuff. All right, um, it's not there. Examining yourself comes from examining the scriptures and comparing your life to the scriptures. Again, watch my King Jesus version videos if you want more information on that. Um, the church buildings. What about the church buildings that the Eastern Orthodoxy has? God never told anybody to build a building and call it a church. right? And you go back to the Old Testament time, God said build the tabernacle, and he has very specific instructions for it. And then when you have the temple being built, which we're going through in our family devotions right now, and you have the, the temple being built by Solomon, David couldn't build it because he had shed too much blood. Um, but God says, okay, you know, David wanted to build it as a nice thing to do. And the Lord kind of says, okay, yeah, sure. The Lord never steps in and says, okay, here's how I want it built. Like he did with the tabernacle in the wilderness. So um, you can't even make an argument, in other words, that, well, there was this, the temple that Solomon built and it was God's house. Well, God was kind of, okay, go ahead and do that. But he never really stood there and said, okay, this is how I want it done. And there are some very deep spiritual implications there too. Um, which take whole big studies to do, to do. trying to make this quick answer people's letters um, traditions equal to the Bible 
okay? Um, again, uh, having the Bible as your final authority, anything that man comes out with should line up with the Bible, and then that proves that the Holy Spirit's behind it. If it lines up with Scripture, then it's fine. If, however, you know, it doesn't line up with the Scriptures, then you reject it. The traditions of men um, is what will mess you up. The Bible warns about traditions of men and being spoiled by philosophy. Calling pastors father, having a hierarchy. Again, another thing that's clearly condemned in Scripture. The Lord says, you know, call no man on earth your father. Okay, for one is your father, you know. And what it's talking about is a religious title because it's not saying your actual birth parent, you know, your, your dad, your father, that says honor thy father and mother. So it's, you know, that'd be a contradiction. It's talking about a religious title for father, uh, the holy father, again, um, and reverend, those things. God is the one that's only ever called holy father in the scriptures. The Catholics call the Pope holy father. And then they also use the word reverend, which again, reverend in the King James Bible is only spoken of for God. You revere God. You don't revere man. So the scriptures are your final authority as a Bible-believing Christian. Infant baptism. I have been baptized as an infant. Do I need to redo it? Um, well, as far as the thing of baptism, you're just showing an outward kind of a sign of saying, I am the old you know, woman in your case that I was is buried and risen again with Jesus Christ. Um, and so that's all that there is to that. Uh, can you go to heaven without ever being baptized? Yes, you can. It's just your, it's a thing. It's not required for salvation, I would say, but it's, it is important, I think, to do. Um, I think it's something that you should, you know, find somebody that can baptize you by immersion, not by sprinkling. Um, but as far as infant baptism is concerned, absolutely no scripture for it. Not one verse of scripture where babies are being baptized in the entire New Testament. Um, it's just a satanic heresy. And it is satanic because then they teach, well, you were baptized as a Christian, and so you're now in the Christian church or the Orthodox, whatever. Um, no. Acts chapter 8, uh, the Ethiopian eunuch on the road to Damascus, and, and, um, and he says, I'm probably I'm thinking about that now. The Ethiopian eunuch, Philip comes up to him, and they're talking, and the, the eunuch says, What doth hinder me to be baptized? See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And, you know, he doesn't say, well, wait, were you baptized as a child? You know, Philip says that to him. And if you were, I don't think I can rebaptize you or whatever. No. Again, the Anabaptist movement, they were, that was kind of a derogatory thing that the papists were coming out with. Oh, you're being rebaptized. Oh, whatever. Um, so should you redo it? Well, if you can find somebody to baptize you by immersion, then I would say yes. The Trinity teaching, um, uh, well, the Trinity teaching is another thing. It's a um, doctrine of men. It's a pagan thing. You can go back to ancient pagan cultures, and, and they have this thing of three gods. There's this weird thing of three gods. And you go to the book of Revelation, and you have the false prophet, the Antichrist, and the dragon. Three different separate persons. Um, interesting there. But the Godhead doctrine is what it's all about. I wrote a book on it whatever. I have free sermons on YouTube that you can watch and see how it um, gets into that. And then um, I do have to say they have awesome chants slash hymns. Well, um, you're entitled to your own opinions, but I think the chants are quite uh, mind-numbing and whatever else. If you actually hear real true Christians get around a bunch of saved brethren that are singing and they're singing loud with, you know, the Holy Spirit singing and you get into the old hymns, you know, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And you start to study the old hymns, and you hear people really singing them fervently. The chants will be just... <laughs> so, um, yeah. Also, if churches are wrong, how can I find a good group of Christians? Uh, the UK is godless. Very big problem right now. Um, back in the past, you could have gone into a church building probably, and found some really good fellowship. Um, again, people had a little bit better sense and things in the past. Um, I, I get caught in these things. Oh, then church buildings were okay in the past. They're not okay now. I, you know, 
they're not in the New Testament. You can meet together, and as long as you understand it's the people and not the building that's the church, fine. Um, but the UK is definitely godless. So is America and most other places. Um, I know it's a lot to answer, brother. I really appreciate everything you're doing. May God's love surround you and your family always. Thank you for your time and consideration. God bless you. Sincerely, gives her name. Um, and there's a copy. Okay, so she has... Uh, and this was uh, June the 12th. Okay, I was just looking at the thing there. So... Um, Christianity is something that you have to learn about. You have to study it. You have to research. And um, as you grow in the Lord, you'll really find some neat things. And um, first and foremost, your job as a Christian is to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And I think that that's a good thing to be isolated at least for a while and start to understand the hymns, research Bible doctrine. That's one of the reasons that this ministry exists so the people can get grounded in the faith. So um, it's all about the Bible. Bible's your final authority. Okay? Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for the letter.